How do you approach validation in the domain layer? There are two popular choices that I've seen. One is throwing exceptions and the other one is returning some sort of result object that can also contain error messages. I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of both of these approaches and I'm going to show you which approach I prefer using and why I like to use it. I'm going to use my domain service for the example and we're going to focus on the one method that I have exposed on the domain service. You can see I'm throwing exceptions when I run into a validation failure and I'm expecting the consumer of the service to somehow handle these exceptions and figure out how to handle this based on the exception message. Now you can imagine that this approach isn't really ideal. So if I wanted to use exceptions to enforce validation rules in my domain, I would prefer throwing custom exceptions. This would either be some sort of domain exception type or something really specific, like for example, let's say I call this the can't follow yourself exception. It's going to inherit from the base exception class. Of course, I need to make this a class and I'm just going to define a simple parameterless constructor inside that's going to pass a message to the base constructor on the exception class. And I'm just going to use the message that I already had in place. And what this allows me to do is to replace the base exception that I have here with my custom exception type. And this in turn improves how my client can consume this method because they now know they need to handle a specific exception that this method could throw in case of a validation failure. Another advantage of using exceptions is that they will capture the stack trace which makes it easier when you are debugging problems in your application because exceptions contain a lot of contextual information that is useful when debugging. The drawback of this approach is that you're going to end up with a lot of exception classes if you go down this route with defining custom exceptions for each use case and with more use cases in the domain, it becomes pretty cumbersome. So I'm going to revert back to the old implementation that I had in place and I'm going to discuss another drawback of using exceptions and this one is not something I'm really concerned with when using exceptions but I have to mention that exceptions will negatively impact your performance because there is a cost to create and then throw an exception. So what are the alternatives to using exceptions? Well I'm going to start off with something really simple and I'm just going to return a string from all of these methods and what that string is going to represent will be an error message. So now I'm going to return all of these statements into return statements. So instead of throwing exceptions, we're going to be returning error messages from this method. And then whoever is handling this method can figure out what went wrong based on the content of the error message. Now this is only going to be temporary and I'm going to show you why in just a moment. And for the happy path in our method, we're going to return an empty string to represent that the method completed successfully. This approach is more performant than using exceptions because we are now only returning strings instead of throwing exceptions, but it's much less maintainable in my opinion. So let's see how we can improve on this. Instead of returning a string to represent that something went wrong, I can introduce a custom type to represent an error. So let's say that this error has a unique code and for example, a description and I'm going to make the description optional and it's going to have a default null value. And now I'm going to update my method to return an error object instead of a string, which means I need to update my return statement. So now I can return a new error and I need to assign it a unique code. So let's say because this is the followers aggregate, I'm going to use followers as my prefix and then the specific error representing what went wrong. In this case, the error is that we are trying to follow the same user which is not allowed and let's pass it a description further explaining what went wrong. Let's update the second example. I'm going to create a new error and give it the unique code and let's say that this is the non-public profile error because we are trying to follow a user that doesn't have a public profile and let's pass it the description. And for our last error, let's create a new error instance. This one will be followers already 
following and I'm going to pass it the description. But what should I do in the happy path when I need to return from this method to represent that this method has succeeded? So I'm going to create a public static read-only field on my error object and I'm going to call it none. And this will be the default error with no code and no description. I can even leave this empty and it's going to represent no error in the system. So now I can return error none and this will represent my happy path. So what did I achieve with this? Now, instead of returning strings, I'm returning an error object from this method and the consumer can check the error code to figure out what went wrong. This is slightly better than working with error messages and it's more maintainable. And another benefit is that now you can document your domain errors. Let me show you what I mean by this. I can create a static class that I can call, let's say, follower errors. And inside of it, I can create fields representing my domain errors, in this case, ones pertaining to the follower entity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the error I have here and expose it as a field. So I'm going to say public static read only error. Let's call it the same user error. And I'm going to assign it the value I had in my method. So this is what we end up with. So let me do this for the remaining two errors that I have. So I have the non public profile and I have the already following error. I'm also going to update the descriptions on these error instances so that it's not the same as the same user error. So let's update the description for the non-public profile error. I'm going to paste it here. And for the already following error, I'm going to paste it here. And now I can document all the errors that are present in my domain inside of a static class like this. And how you would use this is replace all of this with follower errors and we return the same user error. And hopefully you're starting to see how this approach is becoming much more readable. Instead of returning error messages, I can return specific error instances which are documented in my domain and are human readable. And now imagine consuming this method which returns an error object and you know about all of the possible errors that could be returned because it's documented inside of the follower errors class. I'm already pretty happy with how this is looking and I'm just going to move around some files. So let's move the follower errors into their own file and I'm going to move the error object into my abstractions in the domain, which is also going to update my namespace. And one more improvement that I'd like to make is instead of returning error objects in this domain service, I can return a result object. Now, let me show you what a result object would look like. I'm going to write a simple implementation of a result object. It's going to be a class called result, and it's going to contain a Boolean flag, which I will call is success. This will be a read only property, and I'm going to create another property, which will be called is failure. So this one represents a failure result, and it's going to be computed based on the is success property. So we're just going to negate it to get the value for the is failure property. And why I'm creating a result type is so that it can encapsulate an error object. So now I'm composing these two values into something that's more meaningful and I need to expose a way for someone to create a result object. However, I'm going to be more pragmatic and I'm only going to expose specific methods to create either a success or a failure result. So I'm going to make the constructor private. It's going to accept an is success and an error argument and assign it to the respective properties. And I'm also going to write some checks. For example, if is success is true and the error object is anything other than an empty or a non error, or if it's not a success object and the error is actually equal to an empty error, then I'm going to throw an argument exception. I'm going to say that this is an invalid error for this result object and I'm going to use the name of error as the argument for my exception. So what's going on here? I'm going to throw an exception if someone tries to create a success result with an error that is not equal to an empty error. If somebody tries to create a failure result without providing a concrete error type, I'm also going to throw an exception. And now I'm going to expose two static methods that both return a result object. Let's call this one success 
and what it's going to do is it's going to call our constructor pass true for the is success value and pass the empty error for the error object and then i can expose one more static method it's also going to return a result object and i'm going to call it failure it's going to have one argument which will be the actual error that caused this failure and it's also going to call the constructor pass false for the is success flag and then pass along the error to assign it to the error property. So now I'm combining my error and my result object to create something that is much more rich. And the benefit is I can also create a generic result object that can encapsulate a value. So this will allow me to return a value in case of a success result from a given method or represent an error in case of a failure result. Now, how I would use the result object in my domain service, let's go ahead and update the return type to be a result. And first I'm going to update the happy path. And in this case, I want to return a success result. So I'm going to say result success. And for the failure result, I can keep using my errors. I only need to call the result failure method. So let me update this. I'm going to call result failure and pass along the error instances. This implementation is much more expressive in my opinion. The happy path returns a success result object and the failure paths return specific errors that you can reference in your unit tests and make sure that you are testing the correct behavior. It's also really fast because we aren't throwing exceptions and we're just returning values. It comes at the cost of increased allocation because we are passing along new objects every time. And I also have to comment on the lack of the stack trace, although this is something that you can easily introduce in the base result class and this wouldn't be difficult to implement. And one last trick I want to show you is I'm going to head back to the error class and I'm going to define an implicit operator. So this will be a public static implicit operator. It's going to return a result object and it's going to do it using an error object. And what I'm going to do is just call result failure and pass in my error instance. And what this will allow me to do is instead of calling result failure to specify a bad return type, I can now just return the error object directly and it's going to be converted into a failure result implicitly. And this will match the expected return type of my method. So now I can have a structure like this where I'm returning an error object directly and it will be implicitly converted into a result type and I'm only referencing the result type in the happy path when I need to create a success result. How would you compare this implementation here with error and result object to the one that we had in the beginning where we were throwing exceptions? If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm preparing more amazing videos like this one and until next time stay awesome.